Room, yeah. This is for you. Oh, thank you. That's for you. That's very. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign right underneath here. Are you going to put to Mary for me? I'd love that because see, I put to Donna on yours, and so um, I think then we'll be even, Stephen. Whoever he was. Who was Stephen? I think he was a saint. Saint Steve? He made everything balanced. Saint Stevie? Yeah, Saint Stevie. Saint Stephen Stephen. Yeah. There we go. How's that? I squeezed it right in there. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, you have a tiny red hand. Wait a minute, Roman. Don't even go there. <laughs> You Is know, Roman, did he want this? Or? No, no. What Roman was going to pick up my handwriting. Let me tell you something about Roman in my handwriting, okay? Let me tell you something about Roman in my handwriting, okay? Okay. Roman says, Donna, your handwriting is like trying to decipher fly shit from Pepper. I said, Roman, you've seen Pepper, but when have you seen fly shit? You tell me right now. When have you seen fly shit? You tell me and then I'll believe you. But, you know, actually... When we come to the to the uh, labeling thing, uh, I was called by two, uh, actually two advanced practical nurses, with a diagnosis of an actual condition called micrographia. And I said, "What is micrographia?" They said, "Figure it out, Donna. Micro meaning small, graphia meaning handwriting." No. <laughs> There's an actual condition called micrographia, and I really? have it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. Um, my 12-year-old writes really tiny, too, and she was just telling me that uh, her teacher was commenting on that the other day of how little she writes. I don't write small. You, it's you, pretty little. Well, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just read little. <laughs> well, I used to read a lot. Now I read little because also my eyes have changed. Well, I, I don't know. I just, I just, you know, I just like a... Three small, point. Right? It's small. Thank you. It's like three point. What? Your computer size. Your type is three point. Three point. Oh boy. Yeah. As opposed to a twelve point, which would be. Would be like this. Oh, you know who? Oh, you know who? You know? Oh, three. She. Oh boy, boy, boy. You know who? You know who writes really, 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 really big as my landlady. Oh my God. Let's see. Like if I. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. I see. Here's how I usually write. Can I write like this? Like, hi, Mary. I am here today to spread love. Yeah, that's how I write. There you go. Whatever point that is. It's three, three point. point. <laughs> and it's a memo from the big cheese, which I yeah. love, which uh, is more like a ten point. <laughs> this is this is me, and this is the big cheese. Okay, I'm the little mouse, and this is the big cheese. Oh, I love it! Isn't that cute? Yes. Oh, Would you like? This is more like fifteen. Huh? I love it. You know what's funny? I'm going to oh, give you a piece of this paper. You can have a copy of it. So, because this is this. Yeah, you can write from the hip from the big cheese. There you go. I'm going to give him one too. Here's a copy from the here's a copy from the big cheese. I'm going to hold yours for you, The big cheese one. Yeah. I'm going to keep this in front. Of, yeah, it's safe. I'm going to get all. Does my hair look okay? In the box. Does my hair look okay? Gorgeous. Okay, good. Because I have, I had, uh, part of, part of my <laughs> problem was losing my hair. I have that same problem. <laughs> well, you know what? I, no, seriously, yeah. I have it. Yeah. You know, I lost, I lost. I don't have any armpit hair anymore. Mm. Well, you know what? I don't have. I have, don't tell anybody this, but I haven't shaved my legs in like ten years, and you can hardly tell. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Right. Who cares? It's we lost our hairs. Anyway, right? It, it is. It's nice and soft. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Who cares? We lost our hairs, you know? That's right. <laughs> That's a hairy situation. Are you, um, are you two ready? Ready, <laughs> steady. <laughs> okay, great. Ready, That's steady, what Freddy. <laughs> this is what if it's a thing. All right, so I've turned my telephone off. And um, uh, Donna, do you want to move this? How's your view of Donna with this? Um, my view of Donna is fine until she goes down to right, and then that gets in the way. Okay. So, All right, great. If she could move it over against the wall, that might be a nice. Card. What this right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about this guy right here? Perfect. Uh, perfect. There you go. All right. How are we doing this? <laughs>
The bing, the bing, the blah, 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 blah. This is great. Okay, so Donna, when we start, we're going to do what's called a slate. So sometimes when they start movies, you know, they go action. And I didn't bring my slate, but I would like for you to, be able <laughs> to say your uh, name. And yeah. if you want to use Donna S, you can, or you can use your whole name. Okay. And your birthday. Sure. And then where you were born. Okay, okay. no problem. All right, so I'm going to pretend to slate you. Okay, ready? And action. Hi, my name is Donna Marie Szybowicz, very, very Polish, and my birth date is January 8th, 1966, all of 53 years, which I live every one of them dearly, and I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Beautiful. So, Donna, we have a list of questions, but we're really just going to have a conversation. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I get to know you, and uh, we've talked about advocacy for NAMI and helping people understand uh, mental illness and, and uh, being able to also get to know you and how delightful you are. And so I appreciate this very, very much. Well, thank you. So the first thing I'd love to know about is your family. So um, you were born in Chicago, Illinois, mm -hmm. and um, your mother is still uh, part of your life, which is very special. Yes, she is. So um, I'd love to hear about your mother and your father to start off with. My mother and my father did not get along very well, but they are both beautiful people. Well, my, my mom is still alive, but my dad has passed. He's right over here. This is Roman. Right over here, he's Roman. He passed on August 24th of 2017, and I made this little wazoo, we'll get to that later, to uh, memorialize him. And he, um, I wanted this at a bingo game. It says, I'm kind of a big deal, and he insisted on making it, I'm a big deal. So I put his number one dad sign in front of it to make it, I'm a, a deal, big deal. And my father was a very special man. He understood my mental illness. He really, really did. And my mom did too, to some degree. My parents, they, they had their shortcomings, but you know what? You got to let go of shortcomings with parents because you know what? They're the only parents you're ever gonna have. They're the only ones you're ever gonna have. You only get one mother and one father. And while they're alive, you got to cherish them when they're alive because when they're dead, they don't come back. Oh. Donna, when did you uh, move away from your mom? Back on December 1st, 1994. I moved from a group home in Chicago to living with my aunt for a month in an in a, uh, extension of her house. I had... Um, I was living in the group home and I was miserable and my dad said I'm moving to Reno because he had a heart condition and he had a bad leg. He uh, had polio when he was a kid and he had um, he had, a, he had a, uh, he, a crippled leg and he had a heart condition and um, they said you need to move to a warmer climate and I had a couple ants out here, Marianne and Marcy. and um, and. Um, he said, I'm moving to Reno. And I said, Dad, could I please come with you? And he says, sure. So I moved to Reno here. And it was wonderful. I was the very first person to come on the medication Clozeril to come to the state mental health hospital here in Northern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services. And they embraced me totally. They gave me a place to live which is the same place here that I'm in now. They gave me a social worker and, and a case manager and stuff like that. And then when I was in Chicago, I was on a medication called Clozeril. They put me in Clozeril after trying everything else in the sun. And it was such a breakthrough for me that they did a video on me. It's funny how we're doing a video right now. <laughs> In Chicago, they did this video, and this video from Chicago somehow made it to Reno, and they're looking at the video in the hospital in Reno, and they say, that's that Donna girl we just got over here for the first one on Clasworld. That's that Donna girl. Where did this video come from? 
It came from Chicago to Reno, and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. So guess what? I get around. <laughs> well, you obviously work really hard also on the other side because I, um, I'm moving ahead a little bit. So I'm going to stop, but just your work with NAMI is, is beautiful. Wow, thank you. So now I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Yes, so, please, because um, we need to backtrack a little bit because I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. Well, but I, We always will. Uh, yes. So um, so when were you diagnosed, Donna, and what if there was an event with that um, that uh, was something that your family noticed that there was something going on? Well... Okay, uh, the butterfly net got me when I was like, I don't know, 16 maybe. I had my first hospitalization um, when I was really young. I was like 15 or 16 years old. And, um, oh boy, I tried to commit suicide 17 times in my life. Some of them were rather serious, some of them were really sad. But the problem started even when I was young as 12 years old. You know, I would just, I was, I would go to school and I would hear people making fun of me all the time and stuff like that and everything. It was just awful. I'd go to the chalkboard and people were making fun of me. I'd go to my Spanish teacher and I'd cry to her and everything and I would just cry, you know, and stuff like that. And I didn't know what was happening to me. I was just, was just awful. I go in the field and I would walk home in the field of school and just fall to the ground sobbing and crying and I would come home from school and I'd come by the stereo and I would sit down and cry and put a baby bottle in my put a baby bottle in my mouth and I would sit there sucking from it and crying in the fetal position and everything and this is before nobody knew what was going on with me and then one time uh, the first time I uh, ever got into the hospital is I was um. I, I, I took a bunch of aspirin, and I um, listened to a song by Santana called Winning about 10 times. And then I took a bunch of aspirin and rode a bicycle all the way for about like maybe two hours, just rode the bicycle. And then I went into a field again, and then I started crying, and then I went back on the bicycle. And then I went to my friend's house, and I had a fever of 106, and she said, what happened? I said, oh, I just took a bunch of aspirin, and she you know, called the ambulance, and the ambulance came, and they wouldn't take me to the hospital, you know, I guess they couldn't because they had to wait for my parents or something like that. And uh, they were, I took my diary with me because, you know, when, when, you know, my diary would be with me when I was dead, you know, and I... Um, they looked at my diary, the police officers, this is before anybody knew anything diagnostic about me or anything like that. They looked at my diary and they said, this woman is schizophrenic. That would be probably my first diagnosis I ever had. And nobody knew anything. This was totally new to everybody. I mean, nobody knew what was going on. And then they took me to the hospital and I was put in um, the hospital for a week, you know, I needed a blood transfusion and everything and all that. And then I was uh, sent to um, a, a group home for a while. And at that group home, I had a total breakdown and I was sent to a Central to Page hospital. And then in Central to Page, I was there for like three months and stuff and they let me go without any medication or follow-up treatment. After that, I came home. I had a total breakdown. I was in the fetal position. I was crying. I just lost total contact with reality. I went into myself, into my own world. I was looking at my records from this, and they said I said I was from Bolivia. They said I was. In, I, they had to give me a shot of hell all up my butt. They stuck me in a quiet rubber room, and I remember waking up in the rubber room, you know, in restraints and. I was just, I said, where the heck am I, you know? And then I stayed in that hospital, and that's when all the hospitals and all this stuff started, and the suicide attempts and everything started. And then after that, I just started living the life of being mentally ill. It was just one thing after another. One. Donna, how was that? It sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that when that episode happened, then you were taken away from your family. Did, so that must have been... It was terrible difficult. because I went to one one hospital. Um, the, um, 
they, they, my mom didn't know what to do. They put me in, um, they put me in a, in a Northwestern hospital and um, their idea was that it's all the parents' fault, mm. okay? So they didn't let me see my family for two months and I would sit there crying by the phone. I wanted to see my family. I wanted to see my family, you know. I just wanted to see my family. And they wouldn't let me see my family. And the one doctor got mad at me because I wrote a lot. I wrote poetry a lot. I wrote a lot of poetry, a lot of stories and everything. And I drew pictures and they would let, they would yell at me because, you know, I didn't talk for days sometimes. Sometimes I, my voices told me not to talk. They told me to kill myself. They told me not to talk. They told me not to do this, not to do that, you know. And sometimes I go for days without talking, you know, in, in Memorial. I spent almost a year in there. I spent my whole junior year of high school in that hospital, you know. And it's like, and then, oh, man, it was really hard. And then there was one time before that, which I thought was really sad, one of my... Um, Attempts was really sad. It was it was another overdose of aspirin. When I was walking down the street, I went to a, I walked all the way like 15 miles to Naperville to see my um, primary care doctor because I, I trusted her and she was a Chinese lady and I loved her, and she gave me a little job in her office and stuff like that, you know. And my dad would take me down there and I'd work for a couple of hours and on a Saturday, you know, and she would give me some money and stuff, and it made me feel purposeful and everything. But I wanted to talk to her so bad. I felt so miserable as I walked, that I walked all the way to her office, and she wasn't there. So I went and I stopped at the store, and I bought a beautiful plant named Charlotte. Oh, it was a beautiful asparagus fern, a uh, plumosa fern, actually, about this big. And... Um, and uh, I was, I took a bunch of aspirin again, bought the aspirin, bought a soda, took the aspirin, and I'm walking down the street with this plant, you know, and just walking around with the plant and crying, you know, walking down the middle of the street, you know. And then I guess my dad found out somehow, you know, that I was gone and something happened, something was wrong. So he's wandering down the streets and he found me. So thank God they found me. So I moved back. So the hospital thing started again, the whole thing, and back in the hospital again and stuff. But that's how the suicide attempts all went. They were really bad. I was 17, like I told you, and my um, one that was really serious was an overdose of Melaril when I was in the, the group home. Donna, what is your diagnosis at my, my present diagnosis uh, yes. they've called me everything you can think of even borderline personality which they said when I came to Reno they said no that's not it that's not it that's not borderline personality disorder but my present diagnosis is schizoaffective disorder okay okay yeah and um what does that mean to somebody that doesn't understand what that means? Well, you know, let's, let's break it all down. Okay, you got schizophrenia and you got affective disorder. There's two components. There's a schizophrenia. A schizophrenia, you have the things like, you know, the voice, voice, the voicemail that I get, you know. I get that voicemail. You know, you get that voicemail, you know. The best thing to do with voicemail, you guys, this is some, something new for you guys. Don't open your voicemail, okay. You get the voicemail. Don't open it. Okay, I'm telling you. Or you get the visions, okay? Don't go to the next picture. Don't click to the next picture, okay? Don't open the voicemail and don't click to the next picture and you'll be okay. That's my advice for that. That's the schizophrenia thing. Or you get or you get the delusions, okay? You know what? Don't believe everything you hear. There's a lot of shit out there. Excuse my language. You don't believe everything you hear. Check first. Reality check. Check first. Reality check. If you need to ask a question, is this true or is this not, don't be afraid to ask. Please check first. And that's what I advise to people with schizophrenia. The second part is affect. Affect is the mood thing. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to be flat. But the affect is the mood thing. You might be really happy, you might be really sad, you might be neutral, but there's the affect. You suffer in both ways. You have the ups and downs, and you have the schizophrenia stuff. You have a little bit of both worlds. So they call you schizoaffective. Wow. And what treatment are you um, currently receiving? Oh, I'm, re I'm receiving treatment with... Um, 
uh, clause rule. Okay, that really helped with the suicide stuff and the schizophrenia stuff. I had to try first on every single medication you could think of first. Please, if you ask for anything of the legislature, please ask that people don't have to try every single thing, old medication first before being put on the good new stuff. Please, no try, fail first on these medications. No fail first, as I fail first on everything you're talking about. Stelazine, Navane, Prolixin, Haldol, Thorazine. You're talking about the Thorazine Shuffle and the Haldol Hop, you know, the whole works. But um, no fail first, and I'm also being, I had been on Prozac for like 25 years. That helps with the mood stuff. And I'm also on Topamax and Clonopin because I have uh, recently been uh, diagnosed with, uh, with uh, um, absence seizure disorder. Thank God, because my sister discovered that that's what I was going through. For about two or three years, I would say from 2012 to 2000, I'd uh, say 14 or something like that, I was having things going on with me and nobody knew what was happening. I didn't even know. I I just like space out, you know, my eyes would go up and I roll up my head and my, um, my um, eyes would blink like really fast, you know, and I wouldn't know what was happening to me, and I would sweat sometimes, and everything like that. And like it was like I would not know what I'm doing during the seizure. Like I put 11 glasses of water in front of me at the bingo hall, and people wouldn't know what was happening to me, or they say, "Uh oh, her eyes are going at it again," or I would drink out of an empty water bottle, or I eat food that's too hot for me. So what my sister did uh, a long time, you know, years ago, before this happened. And while this was happening, she took me in her house when I went to visit her and she documented everything I did, my blood pressure, my sugar, my blood, my pulse, everything. And everything I did, she documented. And she said, I think she's having seizures. Mm. And the doctors, nobody could figure that out. I went to an emergency room. They said, oh, she's having schizophrenic episodes, you know. But, and nobody knew it was seizures. And she said, I think she's having seizures. She wrote a four-page note to my doctors. The nurse looked at the internet and said, absent seizures. They said it's usually for kids, but she said, this sounds kind of like you. I said, yeah, it kind of does. And then they put me on the medication, the psych meds for seizures, and I didn't have a seizure after that until after my, this is another thing, I'm a cancer survivor. <laughs> In 2017, on, in January, I was um, diagnosed with uh, uterine cancer. In May of 2017, I had uh, surgery for got every, my plumbing taken out of me. <laughs> I said, you can have a lymph node too. I never need the crap. I'm never going to use this. You can take it all out. <laughs> so um, so um, I had the, the operation, and the only bad thing they did was they didn't give me my seizure medication. And I had two really bad seizures in the hospital, and those were the last seizures I ever had. So, so your sister uh, seems like a very smart and, and lovely woman. She is very, very smart. She is also bipolar. She does have her moments. She is also bipolar, but she's very, very gifted. She's very gifted. She lives in Chicago? Yes, she does. And um, so what is the age difference there? This is very funny. There's only one year and two months between the two of us. We should have been soul. We should have been. We should have been like. Um, what do you call those? Uh, soul sisters or um, or twins or something like that. Because we were so close together when we were growing up that we did everything together. We had our own language together, and we had words for everything. I mean. You know, it was like it was like funny. I mean, it was so weird. And we played Indian games together. We did rituals together. We did everything. I mean, we were so close together because you know what? There was a lot of discord in the family. My parents didn't get along and stuff like that and stuff. But you know what? Right now, I'm in the stage of where I forgive and I forget. I God bless Roman. Everything wasn't perfect, but he was the best father he could be. And God bless my mom. Everything wasn't perfect, but she's the best mom she could ever be. I love my mom, and I loved my father, and I still love my father. I love my sister. Things weren't always the best between me and her, but I love her to death. I mean, you know what? 
The best thing to do is to let go, let God, let love, and let be. Because you know what? People don't hang around forever. And the best thing to do is to have a positive attitude. Because you know something? There's no reason to let negativity rule your world. Right. There's no reason to. There's no reason to be negative. It'll only eat you up. It'll tear you apart. I absolutely agree. So I think from that, I want to ask you a positive question. Absolutely. Lay it on me. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to know, and this is a large question, what is your inspiration? What, what uh, <coughs> makes Donna get up every morning and uh, live your life the way that you're living right now? My inspiration is my love for people, my love for what I do, my passion for helping other people. You know what you know my inspiration is? Did you ever hear the, the prayer of St. Francis? Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there's sadness, let me sow joy. You know, that is my inspiration. My inspiration is to take these little guys called wazoos and give them to people. Give them to little kids and watch the little kids take them and go like this, you know, and hold them in their hands and everything like that. That is my inspiration, is to make peace, spread love. See, like when, this is what I inspired me the other day. When I went, I, there's, this, there's these three girls that every time I go to see my boyfriend on the bus, they're always out there ready to go to school, preschool. They're three, four, and five years old, a little boy and two girls. I give them their wazoos every day at the bus stop. And every time they leave the bus, they all come and each give me a hug when they go before they go to school. That is what inspires me. It inspires me when I can help somebody navigate the food stamp system, or I can help my boyfriend, you know, stay in his home and you know, not get evicted, or I can help my boyfriend navigate his food stamps, or I can help my, you know, friends, or, or I can help a uh, bingo buddy out or something like that, or I could, or I could just just pray for somebody. You know, my inspiration is. I don't want to sound like a preacher, but my inspiration is when I could be with the Lord, you know. And my inspiration is when I could, when I could pray for somebody and the prayers are answered, you know. Amen. Amen. So now we've opened the wazoo door. Yes, we have. So we have opened I the wazoo want door. To know the history of the wazoo. So, what is the first moment that you can think of that you started to make? the wazoos. It's kind of sad. I was telling you this before we started the interview thing here. I started making these little things <laughs> when I was having the seizures. Then they call them absence seizures for reasons. They're called absence seizures because you don't remember what you're doing when you have the seizures, right? And I honestly don't remember when I started making them. I think it was somewhere in the mid to mid to early, kind of late mid mid 2000s you know and my dad used to always say you know stick him up the wazoo he wasn't very fond of him you know and I think that's where the name of him came from this little guy named him wazoos and that's it and you know I just googled wazoo one of these days and found out what it meant you know like up your butt you know but I said, that's such a cute name for them. Everybody likes it. They, just, they look at the wazoos and they say, that's such a cute name for them. <laughs> so I said, okay, it's going to stay. Yeah, so I call them wazoos. And you know what the funniest thing in the world is? I went for a colonoscopy. Okay, <laughs> this is really funny. I went for a colonoscopy one time, and I get a bag of these out, and I put them, put them in the front of everybody in the, in the office, the staff and the doctors and everything that working at me. That's the first patient of the day. I said, okay, everybody, pick out a wazoo. You know, and then I went into the room to change in my gown for my procedure and everything, and they're all picking out wazoos. And then I heard this uproarious laughter come out of the, the room, you know. And my aunt's wondering, what's going on in there, you know? And you know what? I said, I got I said, okay, your wazoo lady's ready for her procedure. And they started laughing so hard. I said, what's going on? They said, we Googled wazoo and found that it means up your butt and you're getting a colonoscopy. And I said, oh my God. <laughs> and they laughed so hard. They said, you know what? We never had so much fun giving somebody a colonoscopy in our lifetime. But you know what? That's just the way these guys spread the love. 
And then there was a, one other time I went to the dentist office. I had a bag of these. I, something made me bring a bag of them, a whole bag of them. And there was a lady from the children's cabinet there. I said, how many children are you in your cabinet? She says, 85. I counted out 90 wazoos and said, this is a donation for you. And, and, and we looked at the dentist office and I said, how much do I owe you? And she said, nothing. Oh. And I said, oh my God. I was so flabbergasted and so happy. This is the thing that gets me up in the morning, is being able to spread love like that. This is my purpose. This is my reason. My job is to spread love, to make people happy. And you do. Thank you. So, and you do share these, and that's one of the ways that we met, and I think it's just beautiful. And, and yes, I want to give you a wazoo. Oh, and I get him. I'm gonna, oh, oh, I love him. Yeah. Oh, look at look, him. He's look gonna him. stare you down. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love him very much. You put so much love into these, and I and do. That's, that's you so even caught me in action before this interview I here. Did. I did <laughs> with the Halloween version. <laughs> So you spend um, a lot of your time doing this. Whatever time I have in my busy schedule, yeah. And you are busy. I want to talk about your independence. So yes. uh, when did you start living here in this apartment by yourself? Okay. I started living by myself when I, I came here on December 1st, uh, 1994. And I started living here on January 13th, 1995. And I have been here ever since. I am the oldest living resident in Oakwood Apartments over here. The next person after me came in 2005. So they even let me park. They even let me pick the parking spots for everybody because because I'm the oldest one here. Oh, that's great because you earned it. I earned it, but I don't drive. So I did something smart. I rented out my parking spot. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's very smart. So um, yeah. you live independently. Uh, was there a point, because it feels like you were um, institutionalized for some time. Yes, I was. I lived in a group home for eight years. It was miserable, but I lived in a group home for eight years. Yeah. Did you ever think at that point that you would be able to live independently the way that you are? There was a time when I wasn't sure. There was a time when I didn't think I'd be able to live, let alone live independently. There was a time when I was so destined to be suicided out. I wasn't. Sh I, I thought my destiny was death by suicide, really. I honestly thought that's where it was going. Some reason, something came around that was on Claus Roll. When they made that video, I was such a success story without stopping my suicide attempts. That's why they did that video on me. They said, oh my God, she's such a success story with us. We have to make that video. And do you feel like it's the, is it called Clozerol? Clozerol is mm -hmm. Clozerol, Clozapine. Clozerol is the name brand. Clozapine is the generic name. I used to be on 900 milligrams. Now I'm on 400 because of another success that I have. I, um, okay, in 2017, when I first got diagnosed with cancer on January 24th, I was 252 pounds, and today I am 299 pounds. You're 199. 199. Oops, I blew that one. <laughs> I blew that one. Boy, I'm giving myself some pounds here. I must be destined here. Oh, I can, and I can tell a difference from last year. No, well, thank you. Much. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. Um, so I, I feel like from your story that you really turned a corner with that prescription and that helped um, and also your life changed after that. But it's not only a prescription, it's another thing too. One thing my doctor said, you know what contributes to your success? She said, it's your positive attitude. Because I have a very high tolerance to pain. I mean, an extremely high tolerance to pain. I'll tell you a little story. I have them for my teeth. You know, I have my teeth done in the front. You know, I'm getting the lower denture later, and I have an upper denture. And for my upper denture, I had to have 11 teeth pulled, okay, and two bottom and nine on top. And guess what? They couldn't find a vein. They didn't ever find a vein, you know? And when they try to stab me and they try to find a vein, you know what I start yeah. singing to them? I go, you're so vain. I bet you think this lab stab is for you, don't you, don't you? You're so vain. Okay, they couldn't find a vein, so I sang for them. So they gave me Novocaine, three shots in the roof of the mouth that didn't even hurt, and then a bunch of other shots. They took out 11 teeth with just Novocaine. 
And then they said, wow, you are resilient. And then after that, they gave me a prescription for opioids. And I said, no, I just want a prescription for Tylenol, prescription Tylenol and prescription ibuprofen. Took that for a couple days. And that same day, the same day I was there making wazoos that night. And they couldn't believe me. They said, you are amazing. I said, okay, that's fine. You know, but as far as the pain goes, I mean, I am really, my knee used to hurt me so bad that it would wake me up in the middle of the night. I don't have any knee pain anymore or anything. I am just so, so resilient as far as pain goes. I cut my finger right here. I hit an artery, not, not even one aspirin during the whole experience. I mean, I was bleeding like crazy. My boyfriend had to call an ambulance and everything. It was all over the place. I mean, it was a mess, you know. And the doctor would say, are you on street drugs or alcohol? And I said, I said, no, and then my boyfriend goes, she's always that way. And she's, he's stuck up for me. I was so happy. So relationships. So yes. you are speaking about you have a boyfriend. I do. He's my honey of 20. <laughs> and now does that mean he's 20 years old or that he's your 20-year honey? 20-year honey. He's 10 <laughs> years older than me, and he's such a gentleman. He's such a gentleman. And how did you meet? We met at the Mental Health Institute. And then, and were you at the institute at the time? Yes, we used to. They, so much has happened with the institute. There's so much that went away with the cuts and services and stuff. With the cuts and services, and the, the, there was used to be a drop-in center. There used to be um, outings every week for free. There used to be uh, classes. There used to be a lab. There used to be a pharmacy. There used to be a, a library. There used to be so much. There used to be a canteen. There used to be a vocational program. There used to be so much. A chapel. It's all gone because of cuts and services and stuff. It's all gone. They have a little makeshift drop-in center. That's about it. They do, they have an on-site lab where they can give you a shot for your, your medicine, but they don't do any lab work there or anything. They do still have a med clinic, which is okay, but they don't have the voc rehab or anything anymore. Or anything. They have lost so much. They have lost so much. It's sad. And that's from government cuts from yes. federal money? Yes, government cuts and stuff like that. They just cut so much. It's just sad. So uh, you are able to live independently. and uh, As independent as I can. When I lost my dad... I lost a lot of independence when it came to getting rides to places because he used to be my... I need to take a break. This microphone is banging against your necklace. Oh. And I'm getting a lot of... Let's see what if I can this to place. The mighty beads. Yeah, those are great beads. Good beads. I was static yesterday. Oh, yeah, I'm I think sorry. that might have been from the Wi-Fi transmitter that was uh, right there in the room. Okay, that should do it. I okay. hope that I didn't wreck the interview. Not at all. No, because we, it. that's why we get to edit. Oh, good. It's so much fun. Forget it and edit, man. You're doing great. This is oh. awesome. Oh, yes. You're, you sound wonderful. Um, so, uh, so I want to talk about that, um, what you were just speaking about with um, the way that they've cut the money to the hospital. So... And, and no, they don't cut the money to the hospital. They cut the money to us. They cut the money to the people that go to, that need the services. They don't cut the hospital. They cut us. They cut the people that work there. They cut the case managers. They cut the, they cut the nurses. They cut the doctors. They cut the clients especially. They cut the people who who need to go there but can't get in. That's who they cut. And that affects your health and quality of life. Of course. My quality of life is pretty good because I have a pretty good support system and stuff. But there's people they really need, you know, like people who can't get into psychology or something because there's no service available or something like that. Or they cut, they cut the people who can't. I'm lucky. My, my, I have a very good psychiatrist, you know. She sees me more often than she should and stuff like that, but we won't get into that. But she also, on her desk has a fishbowl full of wazoos, <laughs> and they're, all the eyes are sticking out, you know. And okay. it's like, it's like instead of Lord of the Flies, it's Lord of the Eyes, <laughs> you know. And instead of an Alfred Hitchcock movie gone bad, it's, 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 it's you know, it looks like uh, instead of, um, instead of uh, birds, it's, it's wazoos. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like uh, you have a strong support system. And I think that would inspire other people. What, what do you... 
consider right now your your support system? Well, I consider my support system as my sister and my mom and all my friends, like my, my friends, I have a bunch of friends. I have a bunch of friends I call my bingo buddies. That's another thing I like to do, I like to play bingo. And you know, it's a little costly, but I had, my, my doctor did a litmus test on me. She goes, you have your rent paid? And I said, I got my rent, rent, rent money order ready to go. As a matter of fact, I do. She says, are your bills paid? Yeah, I have a credit on my electric bill and I pay my phone bill, yeah. She says, you got food? I got to get my food stamps and I, yeah, I went shopping. She says, go ahead, play bingo, it's good for you. Keeps you focused, because you gotta watch the numbers and bang the cards with the dabber, you know. Oh, another thing I did during my seizures was I dabbed the machine with the, the dabber. <laughs> I dabbed the bingo machine with the dabber. That was fun. And then I, um, and she says, it's very, it's very good for you because it's social. Right. I make so many friends. My mom, when I was in, she, she dropped me off at bingo in Bolingbrook. You know, she don't like to play bingo, but she dropped me off to play bingo in Bolingbrook. She says, not afraid to drop me off, and, even though I don't know anybody. Because I always come out with a bunch of friends. <laughs> so... But, you know, it's my support system, and I have the NAMI as a great support system. Every time I go like into the gala, if I'm the greeter or something like that, it's a great support system because every time I give a person a wazoo, I make a new friend. Like those little girls that say, that the little girls and the boy that hug me, you know, every time I go to my boyfriend's house, they're always out there. That's a support system. I have my Roman over here. He's my support system, too. And all the people in heaven that love me, they're my support system, too. And you guys, whether you like it or not, are a part of my support system, too. Okay. This is part of my support system. This is my mish mission. This is my joy. This is my passion to be able to do these kind of things. Like when I did the interview with, uh, with uh, Dr. Dr. Professor White, you know, for the DSM whatever five or whatever that thing is or whatever, you know, the skid thing or whatever. I mean, this is my passion, speaking in front of nursing students, speaking in front of the legislature, speaking in front of, you know, teachers and stuff like that, speaking in front of potential employees, you know, that kind of thing. It's my passion. And when I was, you know, and also the other thing is that I love to, um, I like I like to make wazoos. That's my you know, that's my support. My support it helps me out with my stuff. Keeps my hands occupied. Keeps me busy. You know, and I I like to just help people. I like the more the more people the merrier. You know, I have my naming people. I have my bingo buddies. I have my um my uh I love my I have my aunts. My aunts are very supportive. My my one aunt Mary I knew about my cancer before anybody did, you know. You know, even before my father knew her, before my mother knew her, before my sister knew her or anything. She knew. We had to say, Well, we're going out to dinner when we were going to the hematologist or we're we're, we're going out for lunch before we went to the we went to the oncologist, you know, that kind of a thing. But and eventually everybody found out, but you know. But it was she really helped me, my aunt, and then my other aunt helps me out too. You know, they give me rides and stuff like that. They're very helpful. And my aunt's gonna be 80 years old. You know, she's uh, God bless her. She's a beautiful woman. Yeah. So, uh, Nami has come into both of our lives, and I I think it's a really and Nami. I did a lot for Nami, a lot more than I used, not more than I do now. I used to do a lot. I was secretary both for the state and for the local affiliate at one time. I was consumer council representative for like 15 years. I um, used to go to all the national conventions and stuff, and I kind of like don't do as much any now before, but I do do some things. I'm like, you know, the ambassador at some of the events. I'm the greeter and give them wazoos and stuff like that and everything, and go to all the board meetings and stuff. I'm on the state board for um, Naming Nevada and stuff like that, you know, and I just got recently elected. I'm the, as reelected for my final term you know, on the uh, state board. If I, when I'm finished with that, I'll probably go back to the Northern Nevada board if I can do a term there or something. But you know what, I just I just love people and I love NAMI and I love helping people. I mean, my whole life revolves around, you know, being positive and showing an attitude of gratitude. And what, like my, you know, speaking of labels, you know, I have some good, bad labels, you know, you know, you know, schizophrenia and stuff like that, you know, and stuff. But I have some good labels, too, that I want to share with you. Good. My mom came up with a real doozy. I mean, I don't know where she got this from, but she calls me St. Donna Marie. I love it. 
She says, Donna, you're a saint. And I said, well, thank you, Mom. I asked a couple of the people call me a saint, but my sister calls me Saint Mother Teresa. I said, I kind of like this kind of saint stuff. This is kind of cool, you know. I'll go with it. I said, I'll go with it. I'm not going to buy it totally, but I'll go with it. It sounds good to me. You know, I said, I love this. I love this. I really love this. I'm the wazoo woman, the wazoo creator, the wazoo woman. Yes. I'm the cactus queen. You are the cactus queen. And and in a minute, we're going to touch on those things. I think we'll, we'll uh, check in with Bill on that. Um, one thing I think is interesting is, and because you've worked with NAMI so much, if I, because I still don't understand it all the way of all of of what it does, but it seems to me that the three of you that I've spoken with, yes, it's changed, it's opened some doors and changed things, and and all three of you have a very positive attitude, and I think that is a huge component to your oh, life success. Of course, That's beautiful. So, how would you explain NAMI to somebody on the street who had never heard of it? Never heard of NAMI. I would say that if you have, haven't discovered NAMI and you need NAMI, I said get off your butt and discover NAMI because you know what? It's one of the best things that ever came around in my life because NAMI introduced himself to me when I first came out here and it was wonderful. They gave me a place to report. You know, it's like when I first came when I first came to NAMI, the president at the time, uh, Joe, now he's his first name, he, we went to a national convention together and went to San Diego, California. And he took me to the ocean for the first time in my whole life. And I put my feet in the ocean in the sands, the water, and he showed me the ocean for the first time in my life. And that was a milestone for me. And this may seem like something small, but that was a great breakthrough for me, showing that one person cares enough to let me see the ocean for the first time in my life. And I did not only see the ocean, I saw people sharing and caring and loving. These conventions were amazing. I learned so much about a group of people who care so much about themselves and so much about the, the dignity of mental health. I met legislators. I met with Harry Reid and shook his hand so many times and got pictures with him so many times. At the, at the, went on the steps of Washington, D.C. so many times. You know, I was just so honored to do all that. And NAMI is a blessing. NAMI is a beautiful thing because they get, it gives you support when you need support. I taught peer-to-peer -peer for years. I mean, I taught so many classes of peer-to-peer. -peer. I brought people in and out of silence. I brought people back from the, from, from the dead, literally. <laughs> And it's like if you can't, if you can do, if you can't, if you don't do anything for yourself, and you're mentally ill, just do the one thing: join NAMI or join a support group or join NAMI in some capacity, where you can find some help for yourself, and they will have something for you. There's family to family. There's peer to peer. There's support groups. There's connection. There's inner own voice. There's um, there's everything you can think of. There's all kinds of stuff you can get into. It's, some of the stuff's not made for everybody. You know, like maybe, you know, I'm really not a support group kind of a person, and I'm not much of a, a you know, a support group leader, but I really do believe in things like, you know, peer to peer and family to family, because I've taught it for so long. You know, I'm finished teaching it now because, you know, I'm kind of retired from that, but I really do believe in NAMI for people, you know, because when I started out and when I needed the support, it was there, you know. I mean, NAMI is so special to me. Going to the meetings and listening to the accomplishments of, like, the, um, the, the board of directors and stuff like that and how much money they've raised for the individual affiliates and stuff and even, like, going to galas and stuff like that, I mean, it means so much to me. The NAMI means so much to me. I mean, it is my, it is my go-to. I mean, without NAMI, I just wouldn't have had a life when I came out here to Reno. I went to their vigils. I went to their, their walks, their walk and talks and stuff like that. 
My dad came to every NAMI dinner. They have the NAMI dinners at the end of the month from northern Nevada. My dad came to every NAMI dinner. My dad was so proud of him. They named him Father of the Year. He bragged on it. He bragged on it. As a matter of fact, on the wall, there I have an award that they gave me and an award they gave my dad the same year. And guess what? My dad and I are prouder than hell. And you know what? We're going to stay that way. And I'm going to stay a member of NAMI as long as I can live. I'm going to pay my dues. And when they let my dues are due, they better let me know. They better do that for me. <laughs> they better let me know when my dues are due because I don't want to be a non-doer of NAMI. Never, never, never. I'll always be a member. Donna, one of the things that you have been talking about that is really inspiring that I'd love for you to speak on more is uh, more of your success, uh, but your stand-up. My stand-up, huh? Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, this is really bad. So, okay, so stand-up is hard. It is. What What brought you to this? Well, um, actually, Joe did. You know, I'm part of the Whitsand Comedy Club. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And I tell, like, me and Roland go up there on stage, and we tell really bad jokes. Some are off-color, some are not. It's like sometimes like I was gonna do this one during the uh, dental start dental thing, you know, because you know you know I sing to the dentist when he like um, you know fills the truth or pulls the truth or whatever. I start singing to him, okay, and here is what we start singing: Barry Manilow, don't kill me. Fillings, oh my mouth full of fillings. I wish I never met my dentist. I'll never go again. Oh, fillings, my mouth full of fillings. Oh, Roman, put a sock in it. Or he'll say something like, um, or he'll say something like, um, uh, let's see what he'll say. He'll say something like, oh, they had an old women's golf tournament. They had to cancel it. Why? Because nobody had any balls. Uh, I say, Roman, that was terrible. <laughs> or my aunt owned a big 25-pound cat named Calvin, right? And when we lived out here, he would take care of Calvin when my aunt was gone on vacation. And he would do everything. He fed the cat. He played with the cat. He emptied out the litter box, too, you know? And he would take the poop, you know, in the car, put it in the car and take it to the Sands Regency Bingo Hall and give us a little gift upon him in the garbage, you know. Ah. And he put the poop in the car one time and I said, Dad, what's that smell? And you know what he would tell me? That's Calvin Klein number two cologne. Ah. I said, Dad, that's awful. I mean, he's... And then he goes, oh, you know what, you know what, the, you know, you know, you know what the, 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 the marijuana weed smokers are looking for when they're, when they're running down the street? I say, what, Dad? He says, potholes. I said, oh, God. I said, Dad, these are getting really deep and these are getting really bad. I said, Dad, it's, it's time to put a sock in it. They, really, they get worse. Trust me, they get worse. They get really, really bad. And I said, Dad, you're a real sugar daddy. I said, yeah, you sweet and low. You're really sweet and low on dough. <laughs> <laughs> see, see even, when he's, even when he's passed, he tells bad jokes to me. So, yeah. And then recent one he came up with was, was, you know, you know say, you know, ex Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, extra order, stay upset as well. He says, hold the bun, hold the burger, and the order's in, the order's done. <laughs> See, I told you, Roman, that's a bad one. That's a bad one, Roman. <laughs> I love it. How often are you able to uh, do your stand-up? About once a month. That's great. Where do you do it? At the Washington County Library. Really? Yeah. Which, which one? For the, for the, for the one in Washoe County and um, um, by the um, Old Town Mall. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, yeah so, it's, so it's every first Saturday of each month between 2 and 5. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so your dad had a sense of humor. You think you got your sense of humor from your dad? Damn it, he's so funny. I must, if I have a sense of humor at all, it's got to be from him. <laughs> he was so bad when he was alive. Yeah, he was like with my handwriting, you know, they say my handwriting is small, you know. Well, what he said it was three count or whatever. <laughs> and my dad would say, Yeah, Daddy, your hammer is like flies and horse shit. And I said, Dad, I granted you've seen flies, but when have you seen horse shit? I'd say, 
Dad, you tell me. When have you seen horse shit? He couldn't answer me, so I had gotcha. And then I had two doctors describing me as having micrographia, right? Two APNs, advanced practical nurses, micro, my, from one of 15 years, uh, you know, and then my one presently that I have now. And I said, micrographia. I said, what's micrographia? They said, read between the lines, okay? That's what I'm doing with my bifocals. I say, they said, um, read between the lines, micro meaning small, graphia meaning handwriting. And I go, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> okay. Donna, you said something about going to the ocean that I thought was absolutely beautiful. Um, and that you had, it was your first time to go to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Have you gone back? No, I wish I could. That's one, that's one of my dreams. I wish I could go back to the ocean and put my hands and feel my foot in the sand again. I gotta watch out for those damn sharks, though. Right. <laughs> I don't want to go into deep. I don't want to be shark bait, so no way. And I'm not gonna go on shark. I'm not gonna go on that shark show either and give them any of my ideas about wazoo's. You know, hey, I'm gonna give you a 50% of the 50% um, of the uh, um, the uh, profit if I uh, market my wazoo's. No, the wazoo's are staying in an act of love. And they're not gonna be on eBay. They're not gonna be on um, on um, on um, the internet or anything. They're gonna be, remain as an act of love. Okay, they're gonna remain remain a spiritual act of love. A worth of mercy and act of love. Yes, that's what they're going to be. Are there other places on your list that you would like to see? I don't know. You know what I want to do? But I'm going to do it in about, and see, I'm going to do it in about 50 years. I want to go into the little home that Roman bought me next to him. When I get cremated, my dad bought me a home right next to him. In the ground, right next to him. I want to see my I want to see my daddy again. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I want to see my daddy again. And I told him, look down at his gravestone after he, after his celebration of life, which I did the eulogy for. And the priest was a little nervous about doing the eulogy, me doing the eulogy, you know, because I was, might have been long winded or something. And he, after I did my eulogy, he says, Donna. I want you to do my UMG for me. Because I did 15 minutes worth of speaking, and I said, so you had us laughing, you had us crying, and so you did a wonderful job. I had phone calls after I was done telling me it was great and everything. And I said, I did it from the heart. I said, I did everything from the heart. I said, I speak every time I speak anywhere, I speak from the heart. And I said, yes, Dad. I looked at him and said, I'll see you in 50 years. I said, I'm gonna leave for at least 150, 103. So I, said, I said, Dad, I'm going to be there, but I'll see you in 50 years. And then we get a beautiful tree that's growing right over our stone. It's beautiful. I mean, it says, beloved father and daughter. And yes, I'll see you in 50 years, Roman. I'll see you. If you, Donna, could go back and give uh, young Donna, young 16-year-old Donna, some advice about what you know now, what might you say? I'll see. Please don't ever try suicide again. I see, there's so much more to life. There is life out there. There is hope. There is a reason to live. There's people out there that really care about you, especially like even the Roman out there. There's so many beautiful things in this world. There's so many wazoos to give out. There's so many people to make smile. There's so many people who need, who need what, what you can give. There's so many reasons to live. There's, there's going to be the boyfriend out there that you're going to have for 20 years. There's, there's going to be the, the thousands of wazoos that you made to pass out even though it meets up your butt. There's going to be so, there's so many jokes to tell. There's so, there's so much love to spread. And you know what? You don't want to die. You know what that would do to your family? You know what that would do to your sister? You know what that would do to your mom? You know what that would do to your dad? Donna, wake up and smell the coffee. It's not the end of the world. You just have mental illness. You don't have mental death. So if I say the word courage, what, what does that bring up for you? God, grant me the serenity and accept the things I can't change. Courage to accept things I can and wisdom to know the difference. That's what courage means to me. I think you have so much courage. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, and I feel like you do, uh, but if you want to put it in your own words, do you feel a sense of belonging now? Of course I do. I belong 
right where I'm at here. I belong here doing stuff like this today because this is my mission. As Saint Donna Marie, this is where I belong. I belong here spreading the love, giving out wazoos to people, regardless of what it means. But I belong here. I belong in this life, helping my boyfriend not get evicted. I belong helping my sister after her foot surgery last year. I belong helping my mom with mobility, pulling, pushing the cart for groceries for her and taking him out of the car into the, the house and putting him away. And I belong helping my sister going up and down the stairs. I belong helping people. I belong living my life. I belong praying for people every day for 35, 40 minutes in the morning. I belong here. I'm not, I'm not ready to die yet. No more suicide attempts, Sana. I belong here, and I will stay here. I'm here, and I'm staying here, and I'm gonna be here for a long time. Um, is there a book or a poem that inspires you? Yes. It's a poem. Uh, I, I tried to write a book. But it got too painful. I stopped in the middle of it and put it away. But I did write a poem that I wrote that has been published in many places and read in many places. I'm going to read it to you right now. If there has ever was a stigma about mental illness, this will erase it. It's called, Please Don't Judge Me. We come from all walks of life, all levels of stress, all levels of strife. We are often forced to wear a guise, to travel to sing with tears in our eyes, living without dignity, without respect, being called a so-called nuisance, a hardcore reject. We can be found anywhere and everywhere, and we know for sure life just isn't fair. We are often sad, distraught, and hopeless. Living in streets and alleys, we are homeless. Questioning ourselves and answering back as well. We come from a hot little place called hell. We are often dry and devotionless. Or we are in a world psychotically fantastic. We are in a frenzy, haphazard and spastic. We are frowned upon and stigmatized, though we are more human than realized. We are the many, the struggling, the mentally ill. The so-called normal sector should remember we are not put here to ridicule, hurt, desert, or kill. For as fate dictates tried and true, the one you laugh at may one day be you. Thank you. How long did it take you to write that poem? About 20 minutes. It's good. It's really good. Thank you. I think it could inspire a lot of people. Would you mind if I used that in our um, presentation? It's yours. Thank you. I think that says so much in such a beautiful way. That's wonderful. Thank you. What have I left out, Donna, that you, uh, when I sent you the questions, uh, that you wanted to share with me? Well, I wanted to share with you a couple things. Um, that um, I um, did back in my days. I was uh, published in... Uh, some newspapers uh, like the Natal Gazette Journal and um, the News and Review. And then back in Chicago, it was published in the Chicago Sometimes and the Chicago Tribune. And I was also had uh, three art shows at a, um, at a uh, coffee shop in, uh, in Chicago called No Exit. And I sold $450 worth of artwork. And I've had, um, I've had a couple of uh, art showings in Chicago and poetry showings and poetry readings and I won several poetry contests and stuff like that. I thought I'd mention those guys and stuff like that. And I, um, I just you know, did a lot of little poetry readings and stuff like that. And I used to belong to a writer's club and stuff like that and just stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you. Little, little tiny things like that, just little extras. Yeah. And I'm a bingo nut. I like playing bingo, stuff like that. You know, I think I mentioned that before. And I'm just a very, very active person, and I just love life and want to spread the love. And I want to share that, you know, 
that I really love doing stuff like this. And it is so ironic that you were the person that I had sign a thing for your performance. And now I am performing for you. This is really interesting. It's full circle. Full circle is right. And the circle is full of love. A circle is round and has no end. That's how long we'll be for us. I've heard that before, and I want to share that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate this so much, and um, your story is just fascinating. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a sister as well. I think we have a lot in common. Uh, we're the same age. So I'm born in 1966 as well. 1966, Route 66, here we come. All <laughs> right, hey, all right, woohoo! And um, so just being able to listen to you talk. Well, you know what we belong to? The OFC. What is that? The Old Fart Club. <laughs> we are the Old Fart Club. Welcome! <laughs> thank you, because I never got a, a proper welcome, so thank you. <laughs> Well, because yeah. I will never admit it. <laughs> well, guess what you did. <laughs> well, to you and, to, well, and sure. to your people. Well, sure, in the wazoo, yeah. Robin, did you hear that? She's in the base, she's as old as I am, yeah. <laughs> oh, almost. I'm still younger. I'm February 2nd. February, oh, well, guess what? I'm your elder. you got to respect me. <laughs> oh, and I do. Thank you. Donna, do you want to take a moment, like we talked about, and show a couple of the things in your permit? Sure. Okay. Okay. Let me read here. Okay. Get stretch and get a drink. That was beautiful. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I do have a sister who lives in, uh, oh, sorry, but I'm in Elkhart, Indiana. And it's close enough to Chicago. Yep, it's very close to Chicago. Okay, this, 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 this little ensemble here is my prayer station. Which is just beautiful. Yes, this is we pray. Usually Roman sits over there, but Oh here, let me make here, let me make room for Roman. Come on, Roman. Get your butt over here, Roman. Got this one in my car. That's a good dash yeah, he's a he's a dash wazoo. He has a dash wazoo. This is the one so that I don't have to yell at the drivers. Yes, that that's the one. one. <laughs> there that's how Roman that's how I pray how I pray every morning it looks at this. Let's see. And, and it actually seems like she's probably got a lot more oomph than I do, so you know, I'm going to have to name her something uh, with a little bit of uh, edge to her, I think. A little edge to her, yeah. right. Uh -huh. And she's a Stella. I a think. Stella, yeah, Stella, that sounds good. Uh. <laughs> I think she might be, yeah, I think she's a Stella. worth wazoo, huh? Yeah, she's a Stella. A Stellar. We're going to try one more time to get rid of that rattle. You want me to take the necklace off? That would work. Yeah, that would sure. Move. I didn't want to ask you to change your appearance. That's okay. We got you. Got to go around the mic again. Got to. I got to take it off. The, you got to take the mic off, though. Yeah. No. Oh, do I? Okay. Well, how about take it off and just move it? Yeah, you can do that. There we go. There, there you go. go. Good. There we go. You ain't filming me now, so the neck necklace should stay off. You ain't have to look at me, so that's good. If you want to look at me without the necklace, I don't care. I can't see and I can't, you can't see and I can't there pee. We go. <laughs> okay, great. We're doing good here. I'm going to tuck this yeah, you back can, in. You can tuck them back in. I want Donna to be able to move and Bill be able to move because I don't need to be in this part. Okay. So, Donna, if you just feel comfortable and want to give um, just a, a tour like you did. Okay, this you over here. Okay. This over here is my prayer station, and this is something I wazooed that I bought from um, that I bought from um, Hobby Lobby. Of course, I wazooed it. Look at that. Of course. And this is my bag of wazoos. Little babies in there, tons of them. This is my plant factory. Three of my beautiful buddies. All right. My aunt didn't kill them this time. This is a couple of memorials for my dad. There's his license plate from his car. His name, car's name was Zuka. That's another thing. He never knew what his car license plate meant, came from. Like I never knew where the wazoos came from. And right in the middle, see that, see that big, fat, fluffy, uh, white thing? That's the last of the big wazoos. They quit making those kind of big pom-poms. Oh, yeah. So that's the last one they're going to have. And he oh. always had his ducks in a row. See, Rowan always had his ducks in a row. Yeah, he did. Okay, and over here is my computer station. 
my computer station, and, and then on the and then on the wall there's the awards. I got an award from Nami for my peer to peer stuff, and I got uh, the award for me and my dad up there is on the on the uh, other side there. Let's see uh, that, um, and then the TV I inherited from my dad. Okay, and they see the window over there. Oh, well, practice with the cactus. There was all kinds of cactuses over there. There's a bunch of them. That's my buddies. Okay. And then over here, right over here, is my wazoo station. This is where's my beadwork in the corner. And then here's where I make wazoos. You can tell I'm in the process. You know, that's not a bad name for a cafe. A cafe. Wazoo station. Yeah, there is a Wazoo University. Okay. One, year, one year for Halloween, I, I went as the, the, the graduate of Wazoo University with a bachelor's degree in gratitude and a master's degree in happiness and a, um, and a, um, a profess, professorial degree in love. Okay, now that's the Wazoo. Professorial, that's good, but I like it. Yeah, and then we have... Okay, then we have my bedroom here. Let's see, okay. Okay. This over here, so I like to make jewelry. It's not the latest ensemble of it, but see, this is like, look at that. Oh, yeah, like, look at that one, see? Look at that, see? Like, look at that one. Yeah, that's a pretty one, huh? It is nice. And then, look, see, it's like, here's another one, like that one. See, like, look at that one, see? Yeah. And then, and this is this is some phone photos of my sister's kids. Aww. Yeah, they were young, very young at the time. There's more photos in the back when they were really young. Right and is there. that your sister? Huh? Yeah. Baby. Yeah. And then this 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 uh, table, this, this glass table was actually a, a garbage garbage table. It was from the garbage. This this table, and this the. This, this, this lamp is about 100 years old. My dad refurbished it, put new wiring and everything and refurbished it. It's very old. So I keep it on at night, keep it light, light. And this chair was given to me to sit in my room. So yeah. I love it. And then I got a little bit, a little ensemble in the window here. A little, some little, I see little nice little things there. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah, isn't that cool? Yes. Yeah. There we go. And that just, a, and I got my, this is a memorial for my um, Aunt Chachi. She, she, was, she was like a little saint too. She was, um, she, was, she was like me. She never got married. She was a virgin and everything. And she just, you know, lived a long life. She was a beautiful woman. She had, um, she had tuberculosis. She outlived her doctors, very many of them, many lead doctors she outlived. She was really good at that. Yeah, everybody in my bathroom is my bathroom. It was boring as hell. Uh, well, it's a VIP entrance. Yeah, did you see that? The VIP entrance? <laughs> and you see what I got? The VIP it's entrance the Trump here. Trump Tower. Yes, it's the Trump Tower. See? <laughs> oh, there you go. Trump Tower, VIP entrance. And did you notice the wazoos? Yes. I did. Yes, the wazoos around the entrance. And then there's a wazoo over there on the door there, too. Okay. A wazoo mu musical notes? I like the wazoo. Um, maybe we could use that in the background. If we could, can we take a selfie? I just think it'd be fun. So let's see if we can get in this picture. <laughs> it, it. Can you get Trump so, in there and close so, the door just yeah. a little bit? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Uh, great. I'm missing Donna, though. My head's in the. Oh, there you right. go, Donna. Good job. Nice. Okay, great. We're like Ellen. That's like funny. Ellen. Okay, well, that's, 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 let's see, I, th I think, it, yeah, there's my, my exercise bike over there, which I use a little bit, so. Your cardio max, I think that's great. You know what's good about it? It's got the back here. I don't set it on anything, do I? I don't use this electronic stuff. I just wheel with it. Right. Because you know what? I don't like nothing screaming at me. I watch TV when I'm playing the... Right, you don't want the noise. Yeah. That's, they do that at PT. So Look at these beautiful cactuses. I just... This one looks like it's out of Dr. Seuss. You know, some of these guys look like they're very phallic, actually. Right. Look at this guy. Hi. How are you? Hi. You are just set up, Donna. This is great. This is my important information. I put it over here. I'll look at it later. There we go.
And that, that bag, box underneath the uh, desk over there, that's full of wazoos. Wow. Um, it went oh, are you liking my fish, huh? He's loving your fish. You like those? Yeah, you like those? Those little saw that crazy stuff, man? Oh, yeah, are you? So get a picture of me playing bass guitar. There you go. I'm playing bass guitar, see? <laughs> I'm getting all the scales down, see? Yeah. yeah, I'm getting all the scales down. I'm playing bass guitar in a band. I'm playing for my sister, you know, and her band is called Burning Bridges. Okay, yeah, I'm burning bridges. Come on, baby, light my fire, light my fire. <laughs> <laughs> or burn, burn, burn like a burning bridge of fire. <laughs> oh, she killed me if she heard that. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I said, Debbie, that's as close to a bass as I can get, even though it's a damn trout. <laughs> it's as close as I can get. And then, then when I say, um, then when I say the chicken's here, and I say, hey, what the cluck? How are you? Chicken, egg. He's a good egg. Mark? He's gonna lay an egg. Oh, you know it was terrible. You know, you know, you know the chickens in you know how about those earth earthquakes in California? You know, you know the chickens got it all wrong. You know how they're doing? Instead of quack quack quack, they're going quake 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 quack. <laughs> Get out of here, Roman. I, Roman, that's boring and bad. It's your props. No, no, Roman's bordering on bad. Oh, Roman is. Bordering on, bordering on bad. Oh, Roman, I know we're getting to the end of this thing. Save him. Save it, Roman. <laughs> when are you going to do the uh, library again? I'm hoping in October. Will you let me know? Of course. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I got your number. I'll let you know, okay? Great. I would love to have you. Admit, bring all your friends, too. My friend? Your, everybody you know. <laughs> Everybody you could possibly know. <laughs> the more the merrier. The happy you will be. It's a great library. We perform there, our theater for children. It's a yeah. It's a it's a nice venue. You know what I'm going to do? How many how many children usually come to your your theater for children? Oh, that varies, and that's not going to start till uh, March. March. Okay. Well, between now and then, you find out how many children will be there, and I will give you wazoo's to give to your children. Okay, maybe at the gala we can work something That's out. That's where I think that would be great because what I want to do is I want to I want to give them the, the that size wazoo, okay, because they're the easiest count to get when those go on sale. The ten count are getting hard to come by. They're discontinuing a lot of the wazoos, but that size I can I can get quite a few of them if they go on sale. They can get like twenty of them for a buck. So oh, that's great. So what I can do is do make make those cut size and make, maybe make like a hundred or hundred and fifty of them or something. I'll talk to Laura and I'll tell her that you know I will be their greeter if she can get me there. I'll just be the greeter again. Perfect. I'm, like, I'm the ambassador of the Wazoos, you know. Like I'm trying to weird, weird dresses I can wear and stuff like that. Oh, I'm messing with my mic here. I'm sorry. You're okay. I love a hat, maybe a Wazoo hat. Have you ever thought about? You should have seen my hat. my graduate outfit. I bet. Maybe I like the hat. Well, man, I don't even have the hat on hand where we can see it. Yeah, this might. This That's might. awesome. Thank you. Bill. Uh, did you get? If you take on my space, I'm breaking your face. What? I have a parking space downtown. I live in the artist lounge. And uh huh. I am going to steal that idea. <laughs> oh, you like that one, huh? Yeah. They do, huh? And they say, I'll see if it's in here. If not, then I'll show it to you some other time. But let me see if it's in here. Oh, you guys are such a pleasure to be around. You know that? Oh, thank you, Donna. This is, uh, this is really cool. I'm quite touched to be able to do this. Well, so will you take a picture of Donna and I? Just together? Sure. That'd be great. Absolutely. Especially if she finds her hat, mm -hmm. which she did. That's amazing. Uh, oh, I'm a, oh my God. My graduate of Wazoo University. Uh, that's amazing. 
I love it. Okay. Here, that's standing. <laughs> so great. That was funny. We're turning it. Sure. Makes you feel a bit like a movie star when he clicks it more than. Or that. does yeah, it does <laughs> <laughs> like a movie star. Let's see what it looked like. Oh my god, it's so. Oh fun. crap! <laughs> oh god, this has really got to go. You know, I'm going in for Halloween. I'm going to the Wicked Witch of the Wazoo West. I'm gonna wear a big long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear. Let's see. I'll show you what I'm gonna wear. Let's see. Let's see. Where did I find it? It's just a long dress in here. So. Wazoo West. Let's see, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, let's see, not that dress, but let's see, that's, oh. no, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Oh, this dress, hold on. Uh -huh. This dress uh -huh. with the thing that was over it, that, let's see, like, like this that goes over it, see, oh, see through? Nice. It's gonna be this dress 